How's it going, people? Welcome to a Supporters Club special. It's a top four debate, and I brought with me some very special guests today. We've got Chelsea fan Scott. Nice to meet you, Scott. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for coming down today. Flex United, you've probably Thanks, seen man. him about. What's up, man? And Toby, Tottenham fan. How's it going, Toby? Good Thanks to for coming you. down. Thanks Good for coming down. Listen, obviously, this top four debate is it's a big one right now. It's probably, it's probably as big as the title debate. Who's going to make it? Who's not going to make it? Who should we start with? Let's start with Toby, because to be honest, a few weeks ago, you wouldn't be, you, you wouldn't be <laughs> Toby here. Toby doesn't think he's meant to be here. He <laughs> wouldn't. That's not true. A few not weeks true. ago, he wouldn't yeah. be here. That's the thing. But you are. You lot, you lot are living up to this media hack and trying to for, you're, you're trying to force feed this title challenge from down my throat. <laughs> we weren't in the title challenge. We were never in the title challenge. And now all our chickens have come home to roost and we're, we're right in the thick of the top four battle. So I didn't expect anything less if you asked me the same question four or five weeks ago, because we haven't played well. For the majority of 2019, and we're only getting what we deserve yeah. right now. So. What do you th- What do you think's gone wrong in the past month or so? Of uh, mentality, man. The mentality has just completely disappeared. Like um, the best way I can sum it up is that Chelsea match, the two 0 Yeah. Um, Chelsea, Chelsea beat us two 0 and they didn't even play well. That's 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 what that's what really hurts. Yeah. Like normally we're used to going to Chelsea, we're expecting them to throw throw everything at us like they make it a game of their lives and it's tough in that first half of the first half i didn't feel i didn't feel nervous or agitated i thought rah like this is the best that they've got like surely we should go on and actually win here and we lost 2-0 and the manner in which we lost was pathetic as well like that second goal criminal <laughs> and that just that just emphasizes what is wrong with our team right now the players their heads have gone completely i don't know whether it's down to fatigue because the majority of players have literally had to play about 50 odd games ready this season with no rest after the world cup i don't know whether it's uh it's uh um it's maybe they're they're scared uh, or they they can see the task that's up against them and yeah. mentally they can't cope i don't know what the issue is but whatever it is it needs to snap asap and i think liverpool this upcoming weekend is the best way to respond because we did well there last season so i'm hoping we can go there this season get a similar result if not better and obviously that will kickstart our our challenge again for top yeah, four. Yeah, because I agree with you too, Bears. Usually like, in the past few years, Tottenham, in my opinion, solid team, good balance. But in the past month or so, that balance hasn't been there. Usually you're efficient when it comes to these mm-hmm. games, but it just hasn't been there. And it kind of coincides with Kane returning. Do you put it down to a bit of that? or No. That... All went downhill when he came back. No, 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 no. no. That, <laughs> this whole, oh, Harry Kane, Harry Kane, he's coming to the team and he's made us worse. It's, it's hogwash. Without Kane, we wouldn't even have been in a position to compete in some of these games that we've actually managed to get results. And without Kane, um, he's he stuck away that penalty against Arsenal. He scored the equaliser at Burnley. He um, scored the goal away to Dortmund in the Champions League. The guy is, he's come back and he hasn't missed a beat. It's, it's crazy. Like, he's come back and he looks match fit. And the first thing people want to say is he's a detriment to our team. They don't want to take away from the fact that we haven't looked well in weeks. We beat Leicester 3-1 a couple weeks back and we should have been absolutely battered. We played Arsenal 1-1 at, um, at Wembley. Should have been killed yeah. with or without Kane. Sung Hyung Min hasn't scored in about five or six he's games. Got a bit he's, he's, yeah. he's di- his form has yeah, dipped, but dead. obviously because Kane has come back, they'll try and attribute it to, to Kane coming back and Kane ruining his rhythm. Meanwhile, the best we saw from Sun was when Kane was in the team. That was the best period we saw from Sun this season. When Kane was in the team playing alongside Sun, he was banging him in. Yeah. And not just him, um, some of our other key players, their form has dipped. Ericsson's form knows that um, yeah, we were talking in, about in, that 20, before, yeah. in 2019 our defenders our defending this season has been out of sorts from to, uh, to to begin with but in recent weeks it's been worse I mean what was Danny Rose thinking for that goal yeah, at yeah. Southampton players making uncharacteristic Sanchez errors been like, a bit dodgy as well hasn't it? he's been alright yeah you right, give or yeah. take but generally he's a whole defence has been has been out of sorts so when you look at it realistically now in the past few weeks Kane is probably the only player alongside maybe Hugo Lloris bar that Chelsea game Hugo Lloris that can actually stand up and say, wow, like I'm putting in the expected level from me. Yeah. No one else is doing it. Yeah, yeah. No, I see that. But obviously, I'm going to ask you to about top, but I just want, are you confident about top four? Um, I'm not confident, but I think we're going to get over the line. Obviously, we'll go de- yeah. deeper into detail yeah. in a bit, but let's move on to any any comments about Tottenham, Scott? I f- I think I think he's kind of going to write in terms of mentality. I think it's just not there for Tottenham. I think it's the same thing with Chelsea. Our mentality is terrible. Yeah. Um, but in, I think in a different way, I think ours is terrible in terms of like there's a whole disconnect between players and board and manager. Whereas Tottenham, I think it's just pressure gets to them. I think that's the main thing. But 
I f- yeah, I think it's getting to Tottenham and I get to the point where the lack of signings is starting to hurt them. Yeah. We, we're mm-hmm. seeing, I know they obviously had the stadium built and that's kind of helped towards them not being able to spend money, but I think that the, the disconnect between the top two and them is massive. And yeah, I think right even now. United to an extent, United are coming, uh, had the detriment of having Mourinho as manager. Now we're seeing the proper United. Yeah. They theoretically could be third and it would be no surprise. Yeah. And Tottenham fourth yeah. and you're thinking... That's another that's another thing which I didn't even mention as well. In addition to the injuries we've had this period this period as well, obviously Kane being out with Ali being injured and so on and so forth. We didn't sign anyone in January. Yeah. We were we were already light in the middle of the park in midfield. Um and what do we go and do? We go and sell Dembele. Fair enough, you have six six months left in his contract. I have no objection to us selling him because if you ask me, could we get eleven million now or zero million in the yeah, summer? Of course you take the eleven million. Yeah. yeah. But to not sign a replacement it stinks of negligence, especially when you know you're competing on all fronts. At that point, back by that point, we were still, we had just got, we just got knocked out of the, um, of the Carling Cup. We were still, still in the FA Cup, still in contention for a top three finish. And you were probably thinking to yourself, oh, maybe if we get a few wins here, maybe we can start to look up. Yeah. Still in the Champions League, and now look at us, out of the FA Cup, out of the the League Cup. Um, daunting Champions League uh, tie against Man City yeah. and right in the thick of the top four battle and it's negligence from, from top um, from top down no, agree, but also with their stadium as well they're obviously going into it that it could end up backfiring you know it, can, sure, it, it really could because as much as they've been renting our national stadium for this time yeah <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> taxpayers money and that yeah <laughs> I'm taking taxpayers money <laughs> <laughs> paying for our notes for that <laughs> and taking and taking the gloss of all of us fans actually going to Wembley now you know what I mean? It's everyone's just a normal stadium now. It used to be somewhere <laughs> prestigious to go. Exactly. But um, no, nah, th- that is their home now. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And they are quite strong there. And the last what year and a half since they've been there, they've they've put teams to they bed in the big well. games. They've turned up. You know what I mean? So I get it. It's it's like a fifty fifty, and it? it's like it could be the the the, the galvanisation that you lot need because they're in a bit of a slump now. Yeah. I tell you what, let's release the stadium now. Let's get everyone going. You can maybe see that side of it. Yeah. But also. New stadiums, man, they're always difficult to, to go. When you lot first went to the Emirates, yeah. you get, you know, you get some fixtures that come up and, and results that kind of pop up where it's like the team's trying to settle down in the new stadium. Teaming issues, isn't it? That's it exactly, is. yeah. team issues, it happens. So it does. It is a bit of a gamble for them to do that at this late stage. They could have been better off saying, look, we're set here. We know how we play here. Um, yes, the fans will be up for it, but in terms of a player, it's a completely different, yeah. different I think, thing. I think the, the 12th were, were probably downplaying a bit um, to some to a certain extent how big the top man is um, in these situations mm. in this moment now for us we are we're not playing well at all and I can tell you for free the atmosphere at Wembley is awful mm. it's terrible um, even when it's at 60 70 80 thousand sometimes it's it's absolutely it's dreadful flat. and the fans um, I was of the same opinion as well I thought you know what it's in April now you may as well just scrap mm. it for the rest of the yeah. season but because of the situation we're in now because of the eagerness in which our managers um, our manager has to get into the stadium. The players have to get into the stadium. The fans have to get into the stadium. That is going to be our, hopefully, be our mm. lift. And in in a period where we have five out of um, five out of home, five out of eight home matches remaining, I can tell you for free where I'd rather be um, to, to watch those matches and cheer on our team. I'd definitely rather mm. be at, um, at the um, the new stadium. So. Yeah, because it could work out two ways. That it could be it's a catalyst for Absolutely. something. Absolutely, it's yeah. a catalyst to kickstart your season again and get that top four or. You go play Palace, you drop points, and then it might be, oh, was it the right time? So that That's Palace it. game is very Crucial, important, yeah, I think. You know? I mean, if you go wipe the floor with them, then even I'll say I'm confident you will get top four. But if you go into that game and drop points, even a draw, yeah. I think it could play on yeah, the, the, the players' heads, yeah, you know what I mean? It does. And they, they, they try to do something like that with, um, with Wembley last season. It depends on the result. If we go there, we get a draw, similar to how we lost our first game yeah. against Chelsea last year. Yeah, yeah. Instantly, the rumours came out. Yeah. They can't hack it at Wembley. The pressure's yeah. getting to them. And you don't want you don't want those headlines and those problems with like Early six, doors. seven, eight games to go. It's not it's not going to help us yeah, one bit. UK media, you give them a little bit of fight, <laughs> they're, they're all over. They're all, you know what I mean? We all hope that happens to you. They'll build you up. And it's the same <laughs> thing. They build you up. They built you up with to tear you down. It's, it's, it's weird. That's it. That's the UK media for <laughs> you. But let, let's let's move on to another top four challenger. Um, let's go to Man United now. Let's move on. Yeah, man. We're in. Um, do you know what? We're in a position where a lot of United fans wouldn't have expected us to have been before Christmas. Yeah. Let's just get... We know that, obviously, with the Jose thing. Um, 
the position that we were in. The season was a write-off. 11 points off top four. Yeah. Way out of it. Just got drawn to PSG. Everyone were out the Champions League. Everyone was saying. And the club had the balls to make the decision after the Liverpool game. That was the final straw, 3-1. Um, with, a, with a big loss against them. So, obviously, Oli's come in. And you know what? Underwhelming at the beginning. Yeah. There's not a lot of Man United fans that can hand on heart say when Oli got announced. It, everyone just thought it would probably go to character in the season. And, but look how it's been. Look how yeah. it's been with, with Mike feeling with him as well. And you know what? It's, we're in a weird situation where we've won all them games um, in, a, in a row consecutive. And then now, obviously, we, we've lost two, but only one in the league. But we've had to win all those games just to kind of keep pace and claw back that that big yeah. deficit. Yeah. So You're we had to. Ole, yeah. do, do you know what I'm saying? So, but now we're in this position where we're fighting for it. It's not acceptable to just go. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if we don't get it, then it's fine. We were never supposed to. Yeah, yeah. Don't think like that, especially a club like Man United. The mentality. Pretty much all of us wouldn't think like that. We're all, we're all in the top top six for a reason. So, we're. It's difficult because I've always said from the start, even before we went on this run. Um, once it got to a, a point sort of halfway through the run when Oli was sort of doing bits, I'm like, listen, if he continues in this vein, even if we don't claw back the points and all that, but if we just continue in this vein, then I think he's got a very good chance of getting his job. And if we miss out on the top four by three points or five points, four points, whatever it is, and I still actually believe that, still actually yeah. believe that, because we're going to come to loggerheads where I think Man United fans, 98% of them that I speak to week in, week out, just give him the job now. Just yeah, give him it now. Yeah, like he's already done enough to prove that he deserves a shot. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? We've had the the moys of knowing the league inside out, being there for ages. We know how that turned out. We've had Van Gaal, won everything there is to win. Jose, proven winner, best, whatever you want to call him, special one. And look, sometimes the answer to your problems are, are on your doorstep. Yeah, Someone yeah. who knows the club inside out. It's the only thing we haven't tried. So I think we should still give him um, a chance whether he gets the top four or not. But there is an element of this little period that we're in now. I know we've got back-to-back -back defeats and they're both not in the league, but this is where Oli's going to earn his corn. Yeah. Because we've had the going on a great run. We've had a little bit of the rubber the green. You talk about that Tottenham game in the second half, we rode our luck, etc. You know, we, we, PSG, I mean, yeah. God, look, everyone yeah. knows what happened there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, going to uh, um, um, Chelsea away, not winning there for ages, knocking them out the cup, yeah. beating you guys in the cup. We've had the difficult games and answered some serious questions, but everyone was like, yeah, but what are they really going to be like when they lose? Yeah. And we lost against Arsenal. And that game, you know, we come out the Emirates singing, Oli's at the wheel still. Everyone was, everyone was calm. I spoke to you after that yeah, game yeah. because we played well in that game and it could, have, it could have gone a different way if we would have taken our chances. So, but the Wolves game was our first bad performance. Yeah, yeah. That was a terrible performance. Credit to Wolves, but we just no one everyone was playing a 5 out of 10 you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying and you can't play like yeah, that losing against Wolves losing to PSG is one thing losing to Arsenal is one thing but when it's Wolves do you know what I'm saying as good as they are at home you have to turn up to beat them yeah. and we couldn't <coughs> do that so now we're looking at it where we've got two back to back defeats and it's it's how we respond from that and we've got tough games to come man very very tough tough games so the top four look as a United fan you're, you're going to be confident you can get into it you have to be we've come this far and look what Oli's produced up till now yeah what what other evidence have we got to, to say that we can't put a run together again? Absolutely. You, you can, but um, obviously we'll get into the fixtures later. Yeah. But, um, the, the, the run of fixtures is hard. And second of all, um, I think um, you're saying uh, uh, we have got the rub of the green a lot of times. There have been games, there have been quite a few matches with Oli. Even though you've come out and you've, the result is all that matters. Burnley at home, uh, the 2-2, two -two, sluggish performance. Mm. Southampton at home, the 3-2, you won it, mm. sluggish performance. So... Um, there's every reason to suggest, as um, an impartial fan, that Man United could struggle in your in your games to come. And I think, like you said, that's where Oli's actually going to earn his yeah. coin. Because um, if you look at it from a fixture perspective, a lot of people are tipping Man United to finish in the top four purely because it's Man United and maybe no, squad-wise, yeah, squad yeah, they've, it's, it's they've got, they've got arguably got the best squad, but mm. you've also got the hard joint hardest fixtures. Mm. But no, but you, you see with, with this form thing about scraping through games and getting the rubber the green, Nobody bar really City and Liverpool have just been mad consistent. And even Liverpool had little wobbles here and there. And yeah, City yeah. had a little... Have been yeah. swiping teams away. That's just the nature of the Premier League. Anyone can beat anyone. And especially at this end of the season, people are fighting relegation. People are fighting for top four. People like Wolves want to get into the top six. Yeah. Like, it's... Absolutely. I'm not, and that's what I'm saying. This whole top four thing for me... I don't really think I can hand on my heart, sit here, and I've yeah. said this to you guys off camera, and say we are definitely getting a top four, 
Because it's, it's, it's on a knife edge. Like, I look is... at the Arsenal United game and I, and I see that if United won that game, oh. you're four points clear of us. Yeah. And potentially, I wouldn't be sitting here presenting this show. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had had a, yeah, Chelsea you'd be off the next season, hand. mate. Chelsea had two games in hand. They were that's meant it. to win them and go to third. The pressure and... was on you. That, and that's it. And what will happen from now to the end of the season, make no mistake, the games are coming thick and fast and it's just going to leapfrog. So mm. what, we're one point off you, three points off you, you could lose against um, Liverpool, Liverpool yeah. very easily. Yeah. We've got Watford at home. We should win. Yeah. Then that changes everything straight away. Then it's like we have our little banner for the weekend. Oh, look at you. Oh, you're in this position. Well, then, you, then it just goes yeah. back the other way. Then we've got Wolves. We could draw. Yeah. Then it goes back the other way. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's going to be an absolute roller coaster. But from a Man United point of view, what I will say is the fans have been brilliant in this turnaround in terms of the journey that they've been put on by, by Oli and Mick yeah. and all the coaching staff. And... What they've instilled is a belief in the United fans that absolutely our team can function to what it's supposed to. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Under Jose, you, you, yeah. you, you, we've been we've been the band of club. You've been on our you've been laughing at us the whole time, and you saw things. what it's all about. I yeah, I bet, I bet all you got to. And, 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 and you know what? It's refreshing to actually see after the two losses, or even after the one loss against you, like oh the wheels are falling off. Oh, you need new tyres. Yeah. <laughs> Played like what? We've lost two games in like 18. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous that the form was, yeah. was still on. That's this generation now, after one, two bad performances. Oh, of course. It's, well, it's the same yeah, with you. Course. After you went on the 22, yeah. I'm gonna, we, uh, yeah, we just can't 20, wait for you to lose. That 22 yeah, yeah. unbeaten run was pointless, though. That's, that's <laughs> right. well, it's in a position where we are here now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they built on it. They built on it. If we didn't do that, trust But it's more for our own it. selfish things. Like, I can't wait for you to lose so I can get on to you. I can get on to you. Vice versa. And... It's more that. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it is. In, that's what it is. In a season, we have so many different points where we get onto each yeah. other. But yeah. realistically, when I was growing up, there was one point that mattered, and that was the end of the season. Exactly. There wasn't all this bicker in the middle Realistically, of the we should just turn our phones off and nobody talk until the end. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and then we laugh at someone because they didn't get top four. Yeah, There's no point doing know. it week by week, but that's boring. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's, that's not the social media. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's what time is. You know like, Scott, how do you look at Man United now? Do you see them? I think the main thing for all three of your clubs, and this is no disrespect, I think that Chelsea are the only ones, if you look in a few games time in terms of Europe, if you look at the calibre of the team that everyone else is playing, we're the only team that could be left in Europe okay. out of the top four. Because yeah, yeah. I think you'll probably, get, you know, I'd probably get beaten by Barca. I think the Tottenham will probably get beaten by City and I think you'll probably get beaten by Napoli. Although that looks favourable to us in a sense, it also you're thinking, that's more fixtures we've got to play. Yeah. All of a sudden. And if if we get to the semis and then get to the final, we're thinking, just focus on the final. And all of a sudden, we're dropping off top four. That's a t- team that's not going to put as much effort in. You then got all you three are going to put more effort in. You're going to look at, say, because you're not in Europe, you've got to go for the top four. You've got to push for that. And then we're just getting set adrift because we're going to focus on Europe. And I think that that can then help you in a way, although you are out. I think it's no disrespect to United going out to Barca or Tottenham going out to City or you going out to Napoli yeah. in the Europa League because they were a Champions League yeah, club yeah. at the start of the season. So I think it then just looks favourable on you lot. I think the injuries, the injuries are a key thing as well because obviously Man United... Um, to a, certain, to a certain extent, they weathered the storm with um, absolutely did with yeah a, what can only be described as a ridiculous amount of injuries. Yeah, so we like, were like panicking nine, as well. Nine panicking. <laughs> yeah, so mad. If you if you look at it on the cusp of it, like you said, two losses in eighteen, having bearing in mind you played what probably four four weeks odd with half like your your team injured, it's not too bad. So yeah. and I and it goes back to what I was saying initially, the injuries <laughs> are going to be a keep up because now um, for United. The, the, the key players are returning. Matic yeah. is back. Herrera's back. Obviously, Martial, Martial's Martial's injured Lingard's again, but um, yeah. Lingard, yeah. Lingard's going to be fresh, ready to go after the um, break. For us, Harry Winks is going to be back after the international break. Ali's back, so on and so forth. I think for Arsenal as well, like Mkhitaryan's back, all yeah, sorts of. Back for the for the races as as, um, as what um, Flex was saying, it's so tough to call. That it is, is ridiculous. It is. You know, I mean, Scott, you you raised a good point to be honest. As a Chelsea fan, we'll move on to Chelsea now. Top four Europa League, as you sit here now, which one do you focus Europa on? Europa League. Yeah. Because top four, I mean, you talk, mentioned the fixtures later, but just looking at the fixtures, it's poor for us in a sense of we're, only the, we're the second worst team in terms of away form in 2019. Only Fulham are worse than us, and that's really bad. That's mad, yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 Worse than Arsenal? Yeah. No, no, no. Chelsea only won, what, like once? Oh, in 2019? Uh, in 2019, yeah. One, one away win, that's oh, the Fulham, shit. yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just it is terrible. And I think that at this stage we have to focus on Europa League. So does that translate as you're not confident with the top four? Not at all. Yeah. I, I think, as I said, we we I know obviously Arsenal got the most favourable running to talk about fixtures, but I just look at our fixtures, particularly our away form. We go, 
there's at least of all way fixtures left I can only see us winning one and that's against Cardiff Yeah. and we saw against Arsenal they can turn up and put a good result in and weren't lucky in that game it's the worst time to play these smaller teams exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's why the whole do. Arsenal fable, fable Scrap, run thing spot on. people Scrap. need to understand that going to Burnley away or going to Watford away Wolves away they're all fighting for something yeah. like we are right now so I I personally wouldn't say we've got a favourable run in I'd, I'd say take every game as it comes but obviously looking at, yeah. on the paper we don't play a top six side so that's where the favourable running yeah. comes in mm. But as an Arsenal fan going away to all these teams, that's not favourable. It's not, really. that's what I mean. Five out of eight away, man. That's not. That's yeah, not yeah. So, Scott, um, with Chelsea back into your form, what is the underlying issue for you? Is it, is it solely sorry or is it just uh, is it the whole Chelsea mentality? Because I feel like we've seen this Chelsea mentality from yeah. This is their model. I, I, think, I think that's the thing. I think it's mentality. I think it's, I, for me, I don't think enough people just in football in general look at mentality as, as a massive thing. It is a big thing, but I don't think people kind of put as much emphasis on it as it should be. Mentality is so massive in football. You look at just going to Liverpool and City. Liverpool, for me, haven't got the mentality to carry on for the rest of the season because for the most part in their team, they haven't got a lot of winners or they haven't got people who've done it at the very top level in terms of winning trophies. Uh, whereas City have, they've done it before. But Chelsea have loads, like, loads of... But it's not that's... just that, it's in terms of the discourse between the manager and the players and the board and it's the fact that for example in, in previous years we'd have Abramovich if it was going wrong Abramovich would turn up at the training ground he'd go into the players into the manager find out what's going wrong he can't do that he's not allowed in the country yeah. it's stuff like that we've got Marina in charge basically <laughs> we've got, <laughs> we, we got Marina in charge Oil and that's, money's that's drying up mate <laughs> not so, good at all Scott there's something I feel like strongly with Chelsea I just want to ask you first before I go into it Sarri in, in or out? I was out heavily but that was before the the City game and whatnot, when I thought he wasn't going to change. It was just going to be the same old, same old. Because for me and the manager, I look at their in-game management. I don't care. If you pick a, a, a relatively poor team, fair enough. We've seen that with Emery. Yeah. But if your in-game management is key, you know where it's going wrong on a pitch. Right, I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it work with Emery. We see that a lot. Sorry, sorry for the most part until about... It was after the Malmo away game that yeah. we won it. Ever since then, he's started to change a little bit. It's still going wrong in places. Predictable change that time yeah. as well. Sarri's got that thing on FIFA where you know when you can do the yeah, sub. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> what he's got. In. <laughs> he's just got it locked yeah. in. That's it. Barkley for Kovacic. See, my opinion on Sarri yeah, is when I look at Chelsea, like you, you just mentioned banter-wise, it's their model now. Yeah. And in, in essence, as other fans, as, our, as competition, we look at and that's how I see it. I see Chelsea as a club that's been run predominantly by players over the years. And I feel like when you lot made the appointment of Sarri in the summer, you went against the grain of what Chelsea usually do. He hasn't won anything in the mm-hmm. past, so you're going for a philosophy. Yeah. Now, if you was going for that philosophy, if I'm right, then you have to stick by him. Mm. And and that's just because I agree with his in-game management compared to Emery. It's, it's non-existent. Emery mm. will change up formations three times. He'll bring on wingers for sentiments and whatnot. He, he'll change shit up a hell of a lot. Um, but then like, at times that works against us. We look at it and think, oh, we shouldn't have taken him off too early. Oh, why didn't you start him? Oh, if sorry, because you brought him in for a philosophy, I say the first season's about bringing in his style of play. And yes, he hasn't really brought that. And at the first half of the season, we was all giving Jorginho plaudits. He's the best passer in the middle. He's passing left, right, back, forward, everywhere. But it just comes to now, oh, how many assists has he got? So it's just the way you look at things and the results that come with it. With Sarri, I'd back him. I I think the main thing is Sarri's philosophy. I like it. I I think that this this talk is sorry, but it, it, it basically is for me just a slightly more basic version of Tiki Taka that we saw with Guardiola. The problem is, is we haven't got the players to be able to implement that. Yeah. Just taking our fullbacks, for example, they're key in his in the way he plays. Yeah. But we've got Dave, who's not an attacking fullback. He's for me, he's a centre back. Uh, we've got Alonso, who's dreadful. We've got Emerson, who's okay. And we've got Zappa Costa, who's dreadful as well. Yeah. Which haven't got the players. And the problem is with our transfer ban coming up, we can't get those players in to work his system. Oh, so we're just flogging that. a dead horse, basically. <laughs> <at this point. laughs> yeah, 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 right. right. But then on, on Sari as well, Dylan, because um, as Turkish was saying, um, you brought him in to change the way you lot um, look at the way you lot play your football. You want to change the philosophy, so you have to give him time. But at the same time, how can you afford to give a man time who's making the same errors over and over again? No, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I don't want him to get sacked, but at the same time, he's not doing himself any favours. Yeah. He sees glaring issues with your team and he knows that they're, that they're costing you, when you, especially when you go away from home, and he's doing nothing about it. Mm-hmm. You've seen, we've seen that whole Jorginho marked out of the game thing a million times this season, yeah. and he's doing nothing about it. He's, he's that old school like stubborn granddad but sitting at home chain it's, smoking it's and just won't he's change like, nothing like, about William, what he does William for example William don't don't change anything. Been on, he's been on the way in for, he's been on the way in for a couple of seasons now yeah. I've been I've been telling people that this is not the Shakhtar William for years mm-hmm. now and this season 
he's ten times worse. He gives you like one good game in ten. Why is he starting? I think that's the it doesn't that's, make any sense. That, a little bit is that to sorry, but I think a lot of that is to do with the board, the fact they won't send him. Like we, we got five offers in the space of two windows. Yeah, that yeah, one was crazy. The 50 oh, I don't know. Florian was trying to flip him <laughs> by him. <laughs> so I don't get rid of Martial and get flipping with him. I can't say we, we got million. that and Martial. You, we got two offers from PSG, two offers from Barcelona, one of which included Malcolm. The thing is about Chelsea that I would say is yeah, you look at like, no, we speak about this as their model. It's weird because you look at Chelsea in the last 10 years, they've actually been the most successful club, yeah. isn't it? Like, the, when, what was the year they won Champions League? 2010, 11? Yeah, 10, 11. Like so that, yeah. that's within the. 12, yeah. yeah. And like, they've won, they've won countless things. Poorly clad, and, and just gone, do you know what? This is our model. But it's like a model that nobody would want to attach themselves to. It's not even though it technically it's a recipe of success. Yeah. You'd much rather try and follow, pains me to say it now. How Liverpool are constructing things, mm. how City are building their team and believing in their manager and cut. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's it. I feel like with Chelsea, I feel like Chelsea fans almost like don't be that angry because that's your team's model. Probably are going to get rid of Sarri. You are going to bring in another guy until it works. That's what Abramovich does. He just goes, "I'll keep you whilst you win. Once you don't win, later's get an X-man. It's just the model. Yeah. And mm. until they change the whole model, which I can't see Abramovich doing unless they go consecutive seasons so say they I think this season is a big one because if they get consecutive Europa League yeah, then that's that's an indi- and not even challenge anywhere near the Premier League title no FA Cup etc etc that's going to be where Abramovich either is going to go right what's going on in this in the structure within this but club how, but, what, but what does he actually do this season though because um, like uh, we were discussing earlier when you were saying that if you were to sack Sarri now who mm-hmm. are they going to bring in there's no one. There's there's no one that, available. That the there's no one available of yeah, but the we, caliber. That you see the thing with that is we see that you see, so you, many yeah. you see that thing of who you're going to bring in. Yeah, the reason why I'm, I I don't like that that anymore is because I've been through it in terms of the Jose thing. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree with. I don't agree with saying if you girl because she's cheating on you because you're not confident you're going to go to the club and get an next thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? That's the analogy. that's what it is. Like, do you know what this thing's like? She's eight and nine out of ten. She's so. I don't think I'm going to be able to get another eight or yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. I might have to settle for a five. Well, do you know what? Go and get that five. He's going to give you all of her. Like, yeah, do you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? That's what. Because, but what happens? Exactly. Eight, yeah. But what happens when the eight out of ten is giving you herpes and chlamydia each time? <laughs> what, what do you do then? You have to get rid of her. <laughs> and that's the, that's what sorry now. That's sorry, what I'm saying. Sorry, I'm saying is, get rid. sorry is sabotaging their team. Yeah, absolutely. And at what point do you say to yourself, "Look, it's but, enough now." But that's let's, it. let's keep to that analogy. Let's say summer comes and he goes gets check tested, and then they give, <laughs> they, they, they give him his medicine, and then his six week summer works so well, and they come out the other end. Nah, mate, you still done dirty. Still done dirty. Get out, mate. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is with sorry is he clearly has a way he wants to play, yeah. and. Like Scott just mentioned now, the players, some of the players in Chelsea's team just aren't good no, enough to, to play the same way he wants yeah. to play. And he needs investment. He needs investment and he needs the players that fit his style of football. they got a transfer ban, so that means he's going to have to work with whatever they've got in their squad right now, plus yeah. the gazillion of low needs that <laughs> Now we're actually talking about this. Chelsea yeah, are yeah, got, so, so when you, when you, think, when you think about it, really, <laughs> they've got like what, 50, 40, 50 low needs. He's not even... He's shown signs of ageism with... Um, Loftus Cheek and um, yeah. and Hudson Odoi. Um, so if he's not even giving them a chance, and they're meant to be like the shining lights of the academy, yeah. mm-hmm. what chance do the um, other forty? But again, that's a have? Chelsea thing. The, the youth coming into the thing. Oh, come on, I think like, you have the, the like seven hundred million players out on loan that could come in and do a job and do look good. Also, Ampadu looks like a good player. Yeah, obviously he's Loftus Cheek had to yeah, had to take minutes. ages to even get small bits of lookings. Bayern Munich, okay, whether you say it was the, the chairman or their director of football that wanted them and not the actual manager, whatever you make of it, 35 million bid on the table, ready, come, we'll take you, come. Yeah. If he's good, starting for England now, going to be starting in the next game for England. Like, I mean, every time he plays, he looks like he has something. But uh, why, uh, why is, and then Sarri comes out, I saw him in a, in a in press it saying, yeah, but I have Pedro, I have William, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what? And, You're and good that's, that's, and that's why Sorry has to Sorry has to take the blame. Yeah, he has to look at he himself. Has to the press conference is the bit that irritates me the most. Yeah. Right? I understand that there might be a, a language thing. If there is, my answer is translator. Because you saw that with Pochettino when he was at Southampton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You haven't got the thing you use translator. It's, it's not yeah. me trying to be disrespectful to him. Yeah. It's just. But some of the stuff he says in press conferences, Hudson won't be ready till he's 22, 23. How can you say Wonder, that? See, I saw him come on for England. He looked like he'd been playing an England shirt for years. He looks comfortable playing yeah, for yeah. England. That's for that is just appearance. BS. Wrong. Yeah. And, it is BS. And You've then got... it comes. That's exactly what it is. It comes down to age, and we're saying, oh, this is how Chelsea. Have, this is how Chelsea have operated for years. Okay, fair enough. Give or take. This is how they've operated for years, and it's won them trophies to a certain extent. It's got them success. Mm. They're in a period now where 
they're sixth in the table, yeah. They're in the second tier um, European competition. They're not. They're not as strong as they were before. Uh. And now, more than ever, is a period where you need to start trying to get some new blood into the team, yeah. especially when the experienced players that you're playing are giving you nothing. They're offering you absolutely nothing. And this is where it falls back to the model. Yeah, yeah. And all you it's have not to say, their model to say, say young oh, players. Don't he's, do not 20, he's not 23, so he can't play. Crazy. That doesn't make any sense. It's, it's derogatory when you look, when you think about it like that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you said, he, he puts on an English shirt, he looks good. He comes off the bench, he looks good. So yeah. why? Why? Why isn't he ready when eighteen-year-olds are playing everywhere? Like even Loftus Cheek, not even he's even that young anymore. Yeah. What's he like? Twenty-three. Yeah, yeah. He's off. He's off best midfielder. Do you know what I'm saying? He's off best midfielder. I don't understand it's it. It's not. Like, if I'm him in the summer, I'm bashing down the door. I'm handing the transfer. I'm saying, let me go. It's I'm not playing. He's, he's more. He's more dynamic than Kovacic and <laughs> yeah. Um, he's got the same and Ross Barkley. Put he's together. More, he's got the same qualities as both and puts in the same yeah. one player. He's got the ability to retain the ball like Kovacic has, but he's got the attacking threat that Barkley has. But he's got more. Up there, the mm. Barclay has because Barclay has just nothing yeah. up there. No, well, like you said, Flex, this conversation has made me realize Chelsea are fucked. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what what I'm saying. Are really so yeah. We can actually deep it and actually look at their situation. Man, we could genuinely be like, they've got a transfer thing, thing that. It's good. Let's think, if we lose Hazard, and I think Kante's also been looked at by Roman, we lose those two. We're no better than a top half of the table team. Yeah, yeah they're like a top six. Yeah, 100%. You've got the most embarrassing thing. You've got Kepa. <laughs> so manager, you leave. <laughs> so obviously you're not confident that's what you said you're not confident <laughs> not at all. Uh, let's move on to the final club obviously the biggest and best club in the battle right now let's start with Toby Arsenal I, I, I'll save it to last innit Toby how do you look at I'm impressed man round? I can't lie I'm impressed like I've, I've ate humble pie so many times this season um, with Arsenal because I knew Emery was a was a good coach, so tactically I knew like he's coming there to at least instill some sort of discipline, yeah. if there's any discipline in that team. But I didn't expect him to be in the top four race with eight games to go. I, I didn't expect it. I expected yeah. them to be bottom bottom of the list in sixth spot and out of the Europa League by now. But here we, here we are, man. It's, it's amazing. He's, my, look, you, I get onto Arsenal all the time. We have that banter and that, but I know, yeah. You have to look at the the, the football, you know, yeah, and yeah. the results. And I was saying off camera, if he does get you top four, he, he's got to be up there for a manager of the season. Well, yeah, yeah. that, uh, you, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, don't what get what me what wrong. You? If Klopp goes and wins it, God, I hope he doesn't. If he wins the league, then he'll probably get it and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. that. But you look at Santo at, um, at Wolves as well. Yeah. You know, the, but if Emery does it, because like Toby's saying at the beginning of the season. I'm like, well, he's got to deal with all Wenger's mis- mishaps and that team yeah. way off competing for anything. It was a clear punt in the ocean. And to be fair, as Arsenal fans, you're probably looking at it like, if we finish fifth, it's progress. Yeah, like, yeah, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So the fact that you're in this position, um, the 22 game unbeaten run was all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It gave what that what it, that gave us was obviously it's a platform. Like you it? said earlier, it wasn't the best run because we wasn't train rolling through the team yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. playing the big boys and whatnot. But what it's shown was an improvement on the Wenger era. We showed some consistency. We we won games where you thought, oh Arsenal should have won that game. Yeah. And the last in that game, period you yeah. did definitely. Yeah. And I feel your away form is still is is has probably got a little bit better since yeah. Wenger, but it's still way off. Yeah, yeah. Way off. It's like, home form that's there's something that yeah. like there's still something in your side that the minerals ain't there when they go away. They just choke. Their bum go. For, for like, me though, you know for me though, I think I think the biggest the, the biggest thing he's done, in addition to getting you in, in a position to compete for top four, is the biggest thing he's done is in the big games now, especially at home. Like there's a plan, like there's yeah. a clear yeah. plan. You can you can write off to be fair, you can write off Liverpool, Man City because most teams will go to Anfield and Man City and will lose. Maybe not five one or six nil, but yeah. or three one or whatever, but they'll lose. Yeah. yeah. But you look at um, us at Wembley. He came and completely stifled us. Stamford Bridge, he went there. South Sarri's, what, first or second home game of the season? Yeah, that was your second they, game of the season, yeah, yeah. You should have won that they, game. They should have won, won that game. If not for Hazard, if not for Hazard yeah. and yeah. Yeah. finishing, yeah. You, you win that game. And you look at the home. And then they went on there. But that's yeah. what I was saying, even before... There's a plan. I know we beat in the FA Cup, but to a lot, it's weird with United fans here yeah, because obviously I speak to them week in, week out. And loads of them just see Arsenal as this club that's like, Arsenal, beat them easy. Yeah. Even coming up to the league when I was saying, oh, be careful, mate. No, nah, their home form is it's top notch. Yeah. You've only lost the City there. You even drew to Liverpool, innit? Yeah, so yeah. You've only lost one game there in the league. City, yeah. Yeah. Innit? Well, you've so, got in the FA Cup, Tottenham in the yeah. FA Cup. So in the league, City, you've yeah. only, yeah. So you can't argue with that kind of home form. Your problem's just away from home. And I think that if you continue to back Emery, which I perceive that you will, um, you can only potentially get better, but the problem is, is I think 
the caliber of player that yeah, you can yeah. attract. You, Arsenal can't go and right, spend no. 80 plus M's on a now, player. I think you made a good point because the scope of what Emery's job was to come in. Yeah, I think first and foremost, that's what he had to change. What you mentioned there is the mentality of other teams, mm. other fans. Other fans will dismiss us now as Arsenal. Oh, that's three points. Yeah, that's what Emery had to change first, and I yeah. believe this season he has already changed that so mentality. That extent, Arsenal's I've, a soft touch. I think that's my biggest gripe about some Arsenal fans. I've seen some Arsenal fans come out and say, "Oh, he's overrated. He ain't got it yeah. tactically or whatnot." It's like, why? Look at what he's done. He, he did it with Sevilla. He did so well with them. I think they won. Was it like three or four European yeah, titles three in three in a row? They'll cite the league performance. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that great. Yeah, yeah but you got Barcelona, Athletic Madrid, Real Madrid, and all that. It's like you, you, that's an impossible task. You've mm. got. Valencia, he did it as well, and he had a, a very good squad. PSG, fair enough, he didn't, but that's behind Chelsea and Real Madrid, that's the next untenable, most untenable club in the world for mm. me. Trying to do anything there is next to impossible. environments that suit you, because at yeah. the end of the day, Ole went down with Cardiff, but he's excelling at that. Yeah, and I think so you look at absolutely. Arsenal now, again, you're not going to win the title because you've got Liverpool, C, and even United in terms of squad, mm. uh, better, than, better than them. That means top four is the next best thing, and by the looks of things, you're going to get there. Yeah, so like, I think. I, I don't see why Arsenal fans complain. No, I don't. I don't know about. I don't know about manager this season. I don't think he deserves. If if they finish top four, I wouldn't put him as. Well I'm not saying he should get him. I'm just saying you have to kind of think to say what a good job he's done. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying because we've all sat. We're all saying, make no mistakes. In the summer, we're saying they're in for another sixth job. Yeah, yeah. Fifth yeah, yeah. at best. Yeah. And like you said, eight games to go, and they're fully in there. That's a bit After of the beginning the of the season, Bengals obviously, done. you know, the top six show I do. I yeah. discussed it there, we made predictions. And honestly, at the beginning of the season, the best, my best avenue for Champions League football has always been Europa League. <laughs> Europa League yeah, yeah. Until yeah. last Friday. When we drew Napoli. Napoli. You think you got no chance in that game, innit? I think you can I think you can knock nah, them out, man. I know they were a Champions League team at the beginning of the thing, but I think right now, at this stage of the competition, even in the Champions League, teams beat teams that are not supposed to beat teams. It's competition football. It's about turning up. On the day, or over two legs in these cases, and I just think I don't even think you're not definitely going to lose. I know yeah, it, there might be yeah, favourites, but, but I don't know, man. You got to back, back, you back yourself at home. At home, home, home record. That's what I think. So first leg is at home is worse. I don't think so. I don't think we win two 0 I'm still not confident with that going into because they could get three away from. I think I think that's the main thing. I think it's the I think you need to win three 0 to win it. To be, co- to be yeah, comfortable, yeah. Like, we need to win three now at home. And yeah. like, look, you're laughing. But you, can, no, like, but you can do that, though. It, no, man, you can beat them 3 You could concede one, yeah, and that 3 0 yeah. turns to 3 1. Same and with the Rennies FC thing, man. You lot were saying for yeah, him, but the, the, that, that, saying. that without Socrates, we're going to be dead. But I was like, bro, you can I, beat I said Rennes were through 100%. Free yeah. man, I wasn't worried. We're through. But with yeah. Napoli, I always said Napoli is this year's athletic. These are Arsenal glasses, bro. Not necessarily. Well, we've, got you no. on the, we've got you on the camera. <laughs> there, no. Not necessarily. Have you noticed that, bro? These are Arsenal glasses making us drink. Yeah, I see that. Oh, I see that. I, I, I'm, I'm not even on. thirsty anymore. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think I think the Napoli one. I get it. At the Sao Paulo, like it's formidable. Like from a nerves perspective, they could yeah. go there easily, turn you over like three, four nil. But I think the home, you playing the home match first is is key because. In your previous ties in the Europa League, you've you had that embarrassing one 0 defeat to Barté Barisov. Yeah. You almost lost the tie um, against Ren with a three one uh, defeat away from. Home. I think if you play them at home Give with your atmosphere, get a two three 0 result or possibly whatever it is, it it, give, it puts you in good stead going into in, into that. Um, into that you, no, that you know what, I'm not, you're not chasing anymore. Completely. You're, you're, going yeah, to you're not confident. I'm, I'm not confident. <laughs> you don't think you're going to I'm a realist. I'm not confident with Napoli. I'm not like all of a sudden it's changed for me. All season I said Europa League is our best avenue. Now I'm saying top four is probably our best avenue. If we if we go and go through against Napoli, it goes yeah. back to Europa League is our best avenue because then yeah. Chelsea are the best. Who are you? Have if you got them, oh no, you meet them in the final, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Who do you think? Okay. Who, who do you think would win over two legs? You or Chelsea? It's not going to be the... This season will be us. Oh, sorry, of course. It's going to be the final. Yeah, it'll be the final. Yeah, yeah. One-off game. It'll be the one-off game. Absolutely. Yeah, no, we can. That's why I'm confident in Napoli. Yeah. That I'm not. Whereas if you compare Napoli to the eight teams we've got left in the Premiership, away or at home, Napoli is much, much, much stronger than all eight of those teams. Mm. Yes, I know the Premiership is difficult. Yeah, I hear, I hear, I hear. Wade in Burnley's I hear. Two going south. You know what I mean? But if I look on paper, Napoli... In my opinion, are the Atletico of last year, yeah. and I always said last year if we play Atletico, yeah, you're going out, and that's what happened. Go out. Yeah. And to be honest, we had a one 0 lead, at 80th minute, because Shani made a mistake, one one. That's how yeah. quickly the European should have bat- You should have yeah. battered Atletico. At the we should have. We should have. Yeah. We yeah. That's that's chances. So I'm saying, if you're if you're clinical, if you're clinical, and you bring the same heat that you brought against some of the biggest sides that you've played at the Emirates this season, who's to say you can't go through? It's already a way thing. We already know the away one. Well. Yeah, yeah. Most just likely away. you're losing that. We yeah. know that already. But the home one is where you can actually set some sort of foundation to take 
Um, so let me ask you three quickly know. before we move on to the fixtures. Toby, for Arsenal, Europa League or top four, what do you think is a more realistic avenue? Both. both. I think you got. I think you got a squad big enough to compete for both. Yeah. I think you do. Yeah, flex. You're yeah, I have to echo that really, man, because you're in a decent position in the top four battle, and I know that you haven't got the top any of the top five to play. Uh, yeah. You know, but you have got five out of eight away games, which is tough. Yeah. But you're in there with a chance, and like I said, man, I wouldn't completely write you off against Napoli, man. Yes, you're supposed to get spun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But like you were meant to be spun against Paris Saint Germain, but go, man. it worked out. You're asking know. Mr. Optimistic for Europe right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we need some referees. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Oh, you don't think you're going to lose a game for the rest of the season, do you? Um, <laughs> let me see who else we've got here. Burnley away. Mate, you can't. It was the best team they got, I think. <laughs> Mate, you're losing oh, one game before the season's out. Because I'm having that. Away. You're losing at least one game. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You're a bit cheap. Brighton at you home. you got vodka in your thing, win. <laughs> Burnley away. I'm saying categorically, win. you're you're losing at least one game before mm. the end of the season. And, and you're Minimum. Assume that's Wolves away. Yeah. Could be either. Could be Burnley. Could be, Burnley, Burnley. Could be Leicester. Yeah, be one of them tough Burnley. away games, man. You think, well, I put Everton yeah. draw. I put Leicester draw, and I put Wolves draw. That's that's essentially six points dropped in three games. Wait, it's going to be three in one of them games. So let's three quickly points. total these up anyway. Let's see. Man United win three points, six points. Draw with Wolves, seven points. Winner Everton, 10. Draw with City, 11. Beat Chelsea, 14. Beat Huddersfield, 17. Beat Cardiff, 20 points. So that'll leave you lot with 78 points at the end of the season. Chelsea, three points against Cardiff. Three against West Ham, six. L against Liverpool. Win against Burnley, nine. Win a or oh, loss against United. So we're still on nine. Watford win twelve and a Leicester draw thirteen points. <laughs> oh, no. So that puts Chelsea on seventy, so eight points behind United. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's like probable as well. So yeah, it, 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 we could draw as well. Yeah. Uh, moving to Tottenham, so we've got a draw at Liverpool one. Uh, we've got Huddersfield win four, Man City loss, Brighton win seven, West Ham win ten. Bournemouth win 13 and Everton win 16. So that puts you lot on 87 points. And you save the best till last, Arsenal. <laughs> Newcastle win 3 points, Everton draw 4. Watford win 7. Palace win 10. Wolves draw 11. Leicester draw 12. Brighton win 15. Burnley win 18. That puts us on 88 points, one above Tottenham. That worked out well, wasn't it? How much did you say? Yours are a bit 70. I did. <laughs> These very often. Chelsea finished on 70. Yeah, 70 That's Chelsea, eight, United 78, points. Tottenham 87, and Arsenal 88. Hey, that 7 8? Nah, it's not going to be that one. We're not going to be that far behind you, man. I think you're downplaying You're downplaying Chelsea a bit too much. This is what I'm saying about a lot of Chelsea fans. I don't understand why. You lot are completely like you say that. we're shit. It's over. No, like, they're pants, you're still but... like you, you got when you got piped by City and then you lost against Bournemouth heavily and all that. But you're still in there. Like yeah, it's yeah. only a couple of results. Like, I think. I think that's mm. I think if you look at what I actually said, like I only said like two losses and those were against Arsenal yeah. and United. The problem is, is that that means that's three extra points. So that's six points difference, and yeah. then it's you getting points elsewhere. Like I don't think we'll beat Leicester away personally. I just yeah, think it's going to do this. It's going to do this week in, week out. I think it's actually going to come down to the last couple of weekends. So let's end it with Toby prediction. Where are Tottenham going to finish? Um, I think we'll finish third. Third. Flex, yeah. United. Fourth. Scott, Chelsea. Sixth. I'm going with Arsenal. Fourth. That's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. Listen, thanks, you lads, for coming, Dan. Yeah, this has been the Supporters Club special. Toby, Tottenham fan, thank you. Flex, United fan, thank you. And Scott, finally, a Chelsea fan who's obviously had enough. <laughs> 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 uh, but this has been a Supporters Club. Let us know about your predictions in the comments below. Who's going to finish third, fourth, fifth and sixth? Comment below.